All right, um, sample problem 213. A tension T of magnitude 10 kilonewton is applied to the cable attached to the top of A uh, of the rigid mast. Okay, so we've got this mast, rigid mast, and we have a cable attached like that. And there's a tension in the cable, so it's applying a force in that direction. Uh, and it is pointed from A to B, so that's the direction. Determine the moment MZ of T about the z-axis passing through the base O. Alright, so how will we do this? Well, the first step really is to calculate the moment of T about O. I mean, this is, they've actually got three solutions here. And I'm only, I'm going to go into the solution A. Uh, as you can see, three solutions, one, two, three. Okay, and um, and then I'm going to briefly comment on solutions B and C, and then you can go into that in more detail. But what do we do? We want to just first calculate the moment of this this force about point O. Okay, we can choose that point O, and then we that's the first step, and then we can get the moment about the z-axis. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is convert this into a vector. How are we going to do that? Well, we need a unit vector AB, NAB. So I think we've done this a few times now, but get the position vector and divide it by the magnitude of that position vector. Again, the position vector, how do I walk from point A to point B? I walk 12 units in the x direction, okay, I walk minus 15 in the y direction, notice that's the y axis, and then I walk 9 units, or 9 meters actually, in the z direction, there's my unit vector, and then I divide by the magnitude, I mean sorry, there's my position vector, and I divide by the, the magnitude to get my unit vector, and then I multiply that by the 10 to get my tension as a vector in IJK form. Okay, now that we've got our, our force, remember, moment is R cross F, we've got our force, now we need to determine what is our, our moment arm, or our position vector. Remember, this R is from the point of rotation to any point along the line of action of the force. So it can be from O to A, so I've identified two points that are along the line of action, B and A. Okay, So we can either choose OA as our position vector, or OB. Now, which one would be simpler, do you think? Well, to me, OA would be simpler because I've, I've only got one uh, dimension. I'm just using uh, the y-axis, right? So A a is uh, 0, 15, 0, right? So OA, we're just going to deal with that. So it's a lot simpler. But if you use the position vector OB, you would need to take into account X information and Z information, okay? But they use 15J. 15J is because position vector OA from there to there you move 15 meters in the y direction. So there's my r, and I cross it with my force, and I get this. Okay? Now, this is a moment about point O. Okay, so I want you to see this picture over here. That There's the force T, and just ask yourself this question. If you apply a force at point A and you and you want to pull, right? You want to pull at point A. What type of moment do you think you're going to get? Right? You're going to you're going to want to bend bend this guy like that, right? Does it make sense what I'm what I'm drawing? You want to want to bend it towards towards you, and so you're causing this kind of moment, right? And it's about a, an axis like that. I hope that makes sense. You just imagine pulling on a on this mast, pulling it down, 
it wants to rotate like that and it rotates in that um, sense about this axis right so your thumb would be pointing in that direct no that's wrong that's wrong yes no it's right it's right the thumb would be pointing in that direction and it would be have that kind of rotation and that's what we see here there is that moment about the about point O. Okay, so your thumb points in that direction, and then um, we 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 have it like that. So yes, that's exactly right. So I think I made a mistake here. It should be this direction. Okay, so my thumb points in that direction, and the rotation is is like that okay so it's good sometimes for me to be confused because you learn more that's actually um, scientific sometimes if you're more confused you learn more I promise you okay so the, the point is guys we've got this now okay and we've got this vector and now we want to apply it in the z direction we want to see what is the component of this moment in the z direction so all we need to do is remember it's a vector so we need to dot it need to dot it with a unit vector in the z direction and that's what happens here you dot it with the k unit vector and then what happens is uh, only the the k information will the, that scalar value there will remain because i dot k will be zero but k dot k will be one all right so we end up with this so as you can see it's minus 84.9 so it's in the negative z direction which makes sense okay but then this is just the magnitude the scalar value now we need to now multiply it by the unit vector again in the z direction to give it direction all right guys i hope i didn't confuse you there with that um with the direction there but make sure that you understand that uh, and then parts b and c i'll just briefly so what we looked at now was a vector method using the cross product okay then b and c um what they do is with b and c is instead of doing the method that we we just did above they break up that force t into different components they first break it up by projecting it onto the x y plane to get t x y does that does it make sense and then multiplying that by that perpendicular distance to get the moment of this about point O. Okay? So they use this kind of method. Then in this solution C, so please make sure you go through this. Then solution C, they they take one step further, they take that force and break it up into X and Y. Now you can see only TX causes a moment about the Z axis. Because TZ and TY, TY passes through Z and TZ is, is parallel. So TX is the only force that causes a moment about Z. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing.